Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through eight, that's right, eight small adventures for your OSR game, whether it be Shadow Dark or OSE or Mouse Ritter, Cairn, whatever. These are all for different systems. Some of them are more system neutral than others, but they're all relatively easy to adapt and they're all either free or pay what you want. So you should check them all out. I'm going to be going through, as I said, eight of them, but none of them are very long. I think the longest is only eight pages, and some of them are one page. So I'm just really quickly going to be going through and giving you a sense of, like, why I picked these ones. Because there's a whole bunch of free adventures out there. There's a whole bunch of pay-what-you-want you know, pay adventures. But each of these stood out to me in a different way, and I liked them all quite a lot. This one, the lily in the garden where the lost dare to tread. It's a mouthful to say, but it's a really cool adventure uh, for... Mouse Ritter. Now it's really only three pages, not counting the cover, but in this two-page spread, it's really only two pages in the PDF. You have the front cover, which I think is actually quite beautiful, a nice little picture there. And then you have the back cover, which is an overall summary of the adventure with your adventure hooks. Amidst the overgrown remnants of a long-forgotten human ruin lies the cursed garden. Enveloped in an eerie glow and tainted by mysterious forces, a solitary lily blooms, its beauty concealing a deadly secret going to go into this garden and try to overcome this deadly secret, overcome the curse there. Why do the courageous mice venture toward the perilous garden of the cursed lily? Roll below to find out. So a bunch of uh, different hooks that you might have. And then you get the adventure itself, oops, which is just this. Now it's actually a little hard to read just at a glance, but it's not bad. You uh, the, the, the red text is the monster and its stats. Now note, this is designed for the mouse ritter adventure, so the sorts of creatures you're dealing with are um, creatures that would be appropriate to a mouse ritter game. But you could easily change it to whatever you want in a different game, like Will of the Wisps, well that works in any game. A Lost Soul, well that works in any game. A Ghost, Living Vines, that works in any game. Thorn the Warden, definitely works in any game. And Sewell the Serpent, well in mouse ritter, it's actually just a snake. But you could easily add, make that a dragon or a large giant snake, and it would work just as well. So there's no particular need to make this um, just a Mouse Ritter game. Now, it is great for Mouse Ritter, but you could use it for any game that you wanted. You start at the Ferryman's, Crossy, cro excuse me, Ferryman's Crossing, and that leads you to Where the Lost Dare to Tread. With this brief description, the creatures that you encounter there and what else might be there. And then there are these choices, right? You can either go to the Luminous Grotto or to the Garden of the Lily. Or you can go to the Hidden Hollow, right? If you go to the Luminous Grotto, the only way, the only place to go is back to where the Lost Air to Tread. But if you go to the Hidden Hollow, you could also go to the Garden of the Lily. So you have little uh, arrows which direct you from one place to the other. And then finally, the temple beneath the Lily is underneath the Garden. Now, what's interesting there is that in the Temple Beneath the Lily, it says three altars used to break the curse, each engraved, must present with purified lily petals, a gift of the curse, given by a creature cursed by the lily and balance. GM note, there is no defined solution for balance. It's up to you. So this is it, the whole little adventure. I think it's great as a little two-page spread. You could either print this yourself, um, or you could run it uh, just off this one page, and you'd have the whole adventure on one page. I like things like that. Now, granted, you're going to have to do your own work, and, and this is not going to be terribly comfortable for brand new GMs to run. But if you have a little of experience, little experience under your belt, then you'll be able to to run this fairly easily. And I love the presentation here. It, even though it's it's weird to have the adventure begin on the top right of the page, just that's not how I'm used to reading. Um, and to have, you know, it takes you a minute to, okay, these are the creatures, this is the adventure, this is the path that you take through it. I like having this this presentation, and it's very visually appealing to me. I like this a lot. So that's why I picked this one. I think it's a great little adventure with everything that you need to run it on one page. I always like that, one-page adventures. And this particular pr uh, form of one-page adventure where the dungeon isn't, like, visually mapped out for you with rooms, and it gives you a lot more room for flavor and tone. And I like that. Presentation is good here. The second of the adventures that I wanted to cover is Downsized Dungeons. This is issue one of Downsized Press. This is the Crypt of the Barbarian King. This is only four pages. Essentially, you have a crypt as you normally have had in all of these things. But what I like about this is there is a Hydra. And that's a very powerful creature, especially for a low-level adventure, which you're probably going to be doing a low-level adventure here. But there's also a Mimic. You're dealing with ghosts and a treasure hoard. Uh, simple stat blocks, 
uh, magic items, and then you get a very brief dungeon here. It's an old school essentials game. And it's just plug and play. You have a prologue, right? What's going on here? An old goat path now overgrown from disuse winds through craggy hills high above the clouds. It terminates into the sheer face of an ancient mountain inside of a cave whose mouth stands open ready to swallow unfortunate souls who may wander inside. Carved deep into the stone beyond the dark cave lies the crypt where barbarian king Ahanda'ar was buried. Ahanda'ar. Ahanda'ar. I guess. I don't know how to say that. Uh, I think I was right, though. Ahanda'ar. Uh, was buried and forgotten by his people. The stories of men in the towns below hold tales of the perils which reside within and the treasures which wait beyond. So, very straightforward dungeon. You plug this into a world and you're ready to go. There's nothing beyond this in terms of, you know, story that guides you here. It's just a bite-sized bit of, uh, of adventure that you can plug into a nearby region of any town. You're doing a hex crawl, here is a hex, or at least a dungeon within the hex. You're doing a more linear game, but you want the players to have a bit more choice in what they per pursue, or the, have a bit of downtime between adventures and they want to do something. You have the Crypt of the Barbarian King. Could you tie it into a much bigger story? Absolutely, but there's no real need to do that. Because you get the, the basic stats here, the basic items here, and then the dungeon map, and that's it. It's a cool little dungeon, too. Now it's very linear. You're just going to go from room to room. But again, for a bit of bite-sized information, bite-sized dungeon, I think this is great. So Downsides Dungeons, Issue 1. I'd recommend checking this one out. The next adventure here is The Lone Artist's Manor. This is for Shadow Dark. And this is a fourth-level adventure, uh, which means it's slightly higher. Uh, I like this one a lot because of the, uh, I guess you might say, what's really going on, which is this evil paintbrush. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. It steals the blood of the holder if used to paint over a surface. When this happens, you lose hit points, but it reveals unexpected secrets. You can't use it with regular paint. So it's a really cool magic item that you might have to find in order to do something else with it. Like, it could be a quest to go find this cursed paintbrush that you have in this, in the, this, this old manor that's ruined in the woods or something like that. Or maybe in the city, you could do it either way. But it's right there, right? So according to a local village, uh, according to the local village's folk, the manor in the woods once belonged to Elicus, a famous artist from the city that, he, uh, that wanted to connect with nature. Although he was very friendly, he gradually stopped visiting the village and no one saw him anymore. Now that decades have passed, some rumors suggest that the true reason why he wanted to live isolated was that he had been stained by a curse that worsened over time. What this curse consisted in, no one knows. Yet his riches are still behind those walls. You've got hellhounds, shadows, dire rats, and animated armor that counts as knights. This is the whole dungeon right there, and you've got a brief description of each one. And it's what you might expect from a, uh, a magic artist who is kind of cursed and doing bad things. But it's not terribly too, too bad. You could put this in any game. It's not like it's, you know, like <laughs> adult content or anything like that. But uh, there is enough going on here that would be an interesting little dungeon. Again, plug and play. Uh, into any world. There could be a rumor about this place that you want to go loot, or, again, you're trying to find a particular quest item, uh, or you're trying to find a way into a particular uh, vault or something like that, and the only way to use it is to use this tainted brush to get through, right? I mean, there's so many different ways you could do it. Maybe the brush, what it does is, when you paint it on a wall, it creates a secret door, or it creates a, a passageway through. It does a pass wall spell or something like that. That would be great use that in any sort of campaign. So even though the dungeon itself is very, very straightforward, it's not terribly exciting in terms of its layout. Um, you know, the monsters are pretty much straightforward. That idea and the plug and play nature of this is great. I like it a lot. I recommend checking it out. And again, you can you can pay what you want for it. So if you want to check it out, use it. And if it works out well, you know, throw them a couple dollars. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's free. The next adventure here is the Rotting Gardens of Rafflesia. It's a quick dungeon for level 1 and 2, designed for Shadow Dark RPG. This is a great adventure in terms of its presentation. It's, it's classic Shadow Dark in terms of its uh, visual tone that is being presented here. It reminds me a lot of Sursa Victory's uh, dungeons, the way that the art is used there. A very small, uh, circular dungeon, which is interesting, with a passage from room 4 to room 5, if you, if you know what you're doing here. But the whole tone here is, again, this rotten garden and it, and it comes through very well in the rooms that you get. A rotting serpent with a corpse blossom, venom, 
uh, DC 12 or blossoms burst from your flesh. It's really gross, right? But it fits with what's going on here. You got rot flowers, algae covered skeletons, gray oozes, and elven zombies. Uh, with the page numbers from the Shadow Dark Core rulebook. And you also have sodden stones. The torches dropped on the floor of this dungeon are extinguished. So a little, a little feature that runs throughout the whole dungeon, but it's very short, right? You've just got a, a few pages of this. The entrance, uh, overgrown rooms with a thorny vine trap, a corpse flower room. And then you've got this bloom or rot, right? The water in this dungeon is enchanted with the power of Rafflesia. Drinking the water induces the bloom or rot effect. Risk reward. If you know about this, you can drink it to gain some hit points. Or you could fail and lose some hit points as a stinking flower bursts from your skin. It's a really flavorful idea. Um, and, and this whole thing, right, is just, it's just like a, it's a little burst, <laughs> a bite-sized burst of really, really good tone and flavor. There's a fountain room, elven uh, warrior statues, a shrine to Rafflesia, which is this elven goddess of nature, an overflowing urn with this stuff. And then there's a magenta jewel, which is worth probably some experience points, given what it is. There's no massive, um, you know, uh, boss. It's not a huge story. Again, it's very, very short. But you could throw this into the world, have it be a, a, a little roadside adventure, roadside shrine. Maybe you put something there, an adventurer has gone there, or maybe, there's a, maybe they're trying to get the water for some reason. Whatever it might be, it's a little bite-sized dungeon you can throw into any game, and it's really flavorful. It's not generic. It's not just kobolds in a room who want to rob travelers or something like that, right? This is a rotting garden with creepy flowers that are bursting out of skin and bones, and it's, it's really, really interesting. I like it a lot. Hope you guys do too. The next adventure here is Castle Korpenhalla. Now, this is the whole thing. It's a one-page dungeon, but there are three pages to the PDF because it's been balanced for three different games. Dungeon Reavers, Morkborg, and Old School Essentials. I'll, I'll focus on the Old School Essentials one because that's the one I'm most familiar with. So essentially, this is a short version of Ravenloft. And if you look at the map, it really is a condensed Ravenloft. The rooms are very heavily uh, inspired by it. And so you'd, you'd kind of have to be, not you wouldn't have to be, but it would be helpful to be familiar with that dungeon with the Ravenloft dungeon in order to be you know, most comfortable running this game. That's what it says in the overview as well. This dungeon is on the bottom right. This dungeon is heavily inspired by Ravenloft, but the main objective is to steal some treasure and run away. Those who come to rescue villagers soon find out that every human being, every human became a twisted abomination controlled by Lord Bloodig. Slaying the host is no easy task, as his soul is not attached to the body he's currently using, but to the giant heart, 60 hit points, of the West Tower, whose eyes cause D6 damage of madness per turn, which is insanely high in old school essentials. An extra-dimensional being is locked behind an arcane barrier in the catacombs, and making contact with it grants resistance to the effects of madness. But the encounter rate raises to 3 and 6, and every monster inside the castle gains plus 2 damage bonus. So you go all the way down to the bottom to meet with this extraplanar entity to get that resistance to the heart and its madness, but and to, to kill it, to destroy the, the dude, but that means you're going to be fighting a lot more monsters, and they're going to be stronger. But basically what you have is D6 rumors uh, with D6 treasures, with some set treasures that are in particular rooms. And then you have a bestiary, which is just a d12 or 2d6. Uh, I guess it'd be a d12 because you have a 1 or a 2 for Lord Bloating. So probably a d12. Um, and then the overview. And then you get the map. And that's it. That's the whole dungeon. I think this is awesome. Really, really cool. First of all, I like the, uh, the art style quite a lot. It, 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 it appeals to me. It reminds me a little bit of um, those... I forget who does them, unfortunately, but there are these, you know, these the maps of old school D and D adventures where uh, the artist kind of narrates the path of the party through it in comic book style and, and makes jokes about things. Kind of reminds me of that art style, and that appeals to me a lot. So, if you're interested in running a slightly different version of Ravenloft, maybe a one shot in Ravenloft, and you don't want to do something like the Count, the Curse, and the um, Castle or the Castle, the Count, and the Curse. I forget the, the order of those words, which I've reviewed before. Uh, if you want to do something more get in, get out, uh, old school essentials, dungeon crawl, gets treasure, and all that stuff, then you could run Castle Cor Castle Corpenhalla, and uh, you would have, a, I think, a great time with this one. And again, just one page, everything you need to know to run this game right here. You have this open. You could print it out, but that'd be a lot of black ink. All right, the next uh, one is a little longer, but the idea here was awesome. 
And this is the idea of parallel dungeons. So this is essentially three dungeons in one. Jump between three dungeons that exist in parallel dimensions. It's an OSR adventure. It's pretty system neutral. Uh, but you can go through. There's the Cave of Demon Corsairs, the Mining Tunnels of Q3296, and Tranquility and Transcendence. These are the three dungeons. The adventure describes three dungeons that occupy the same cave, but in parallel dimensions. The adventure can begin in any of the dungeons, the one that fits your campaign setting the best. It is the PC's native dimension. The group is given a dimensional shifting device that allows them to shift between dungeons. So it definitely is going to be of a very particular tone, right? <laughs> like this isn't going to fit every single kind of game because these other dungeons are, one of them is kind of sci-fi and horror, and the other is, uh, you know, well, like sort of demonic, you'll see. And then the other one's sort of like, you know, a, a monk's enlightenment um, they say it's kind of like uh, Doctor Strange or something like that. Uh, and there's a dimensional shifting device that can let you shift through. So again, it sounds pretty much sci-fi-y, and that's not going to fit in every in everybody's system. But you could run this as a great, interesting one-shot that the players would definitely remember. Um, with rules of the cave and then the dimensional shifting device. Now, one thing is the dungeon itself is pretty boring looking. It's just a it's just a dungeon, it's just a cave system. But there are a lot of paths and ways to go, right? So you start in one, but you can easily go into 10, four, six, two. I mean, there's just, it's, whew, it's like a spider web. You can go wherever you want uh, very, very easily. So that's, in, in a sense, I think really, really good um, with some resistance, right? So it'd be harder to climb up into five or uh, things like that. And then you have each of the three things laid out side by side. So Cave of the Demon Corsairs with the theme, the setting, dressing, random encounters on a D6 table, and random items. And you have that for each. So it's really simple to run, depending on which you're in. And, uh, okay, what's the theme of the mining tunnels of Q3296? The asteroid Q3296 is rich in platinum and perils. The ancient tunnels must be explored before a new operation can commence. Sci-fi, either the Traveler or the horrific Nostromo kind from Alien. The tunnels, strangely, are in a bubble of breathable atmosphere. The dressing is faint glimmer of platinum veins, distant whispers, a low hum, moon dust, low pressure, variant gravity, and weird vibrations. And the random encounters are D3 flapping horrors. Uh, flapping horror defending an egg sack. D4 astro zombies on the prowl. For holographic echo of miners from out of time. Tremors. Or Jones the Cat. <laughs> which is, of course, from Alien. Jonesy. Uh, and D8 lives left. <laughs> I love that. So you have these three different locations. Tranquility and Transcendence. Demon and the Cave of the Demon Corsairs. And then you have a key for each of the three dungeons side by side. So room one has the three, room two has the three, room four has the three. So clearly laid out. I mean, for an idea that is as complex as this, where you have three parallel dungeons you're gonna be jumping between, like you could make it super complicated. Uh, this is so well laid out. You just have the map to the side, you just you know take off that one page and have the map separately and you have these pages up and you have the entire dungeon easily if the players shift between them quickly you can know where they're going to go all of that uh is just done it's so so cool last note dimension shift responsibly so i highly recommend checking out parallel dungeons even if you just want inspiration for your own dungeon uh parallel dimension hopping dungeon because this is an idea that i think is, is a it's a slam dunk and I can't believe that no one else, at least other people that I know of, haven't done this before. I've never run into this. Great idea. All right, the next one is a, The Lair of the Alchemist, which is a dungeon crawl inspired by the island of Dr. Moreau. Now, this one is for the use, for use with Karen. Now, I am a huge fan of the classics. Uh, I love H.G. Wells. I love Jules Verne. Uh, I guess those aren't technically the classics so much, but I think of them as the classics. Um, and so any, and, and I love uh, different adventures that are inspired by classic literature, things like that. So I, I, I was immediately drawn to this idea. But especially the island of Dr. Moreau is very much body horror and uh, you know, really disturbing ideas. And, and it's, it's, a great, it's a great setting for an adventure. So I can see why someone would you know, decide to, to try to take it in and uh, be inspired by it. But what I like about it is how it's laid out. Primarily. I really, really like the presentation of this dungeon. You just get the map, and then you get all drawn out around it, room descriptions, arrows pointing to where you need to go, bullet points, uh, italics. So simple to use. You keep this one page up, and you have how to run the dungeon, right? So as a short adventure, this is the, this is the way to do it. And by the way, I have to say, the actual description fits so well, or the, the, the art fits so well with the tone that it's trying to develop. 
the color palette, the, the way that the art's been presented. I mean, I just, this draws me in so much. I love this adventure quite a lot. And then the description of what's going on here is particularly kind of gross and horrific, and then there are lots of cool alchemical properties to find. This would be a great adventure to, to run if you have someone in your party that likes alchemy. I have players that really like I've developed alchemy subsystems for my games, 5e, and for the West Marches and things, and I've kind of created a whole alchemical system, and my players love that. So a couple of them are, are super into it. It would be great to throw this, and I'm thinking of this now, it would be great to run them through this dungeon. And it would be kind of a challenge to them, right? Because they're like, ooh, alchemy. But then they would see some of the horrors that alchemy results in, and it'd be like, ooh, okay, maybe a challenge to my character, a challenge to me as a player. It'd be great. It'd be awesome. Then you get the rest of the stuff. So you get the dungeon right there, but then you get a backstory with rumors, magic item, encounters, treasures, minor loot, and what happens if you get the cursed blood. Then there's a cursed dwarf patrol, so it's a particular set of people, NPCs that you can kind of interact with along with their traits and, and what they're like. And then, of course, Morelius, who is the alchemist, the, uh, you know, horrible thing um, uh, that has been that has been working here. He aims to create a living collection of unique enhanced creatures. So that's the whole dungeon. Five pages. Super cool. Oh man, The Lair of the Alchemist. I really highly recommend this. Now again, I've been looking through a lot of Karen adventures recently and I'm very impressed, very impressed by a lot of them. And this is one of the top ones. I love The Lair of the Alchemist. Finally, uh, I'm gonna go through a little, little two page dungeon called The Lair of the Storms. It's just two pages. And it really is just a forest of storms, excuse me, not layer of the storms, forest of the storms. Uh, that's it. It's just the whole dungeon right here. This is the technically the first page. It's the second page of the PDF, but it's just the, it's sort of, you can see it's designed to be a bit of a, of a fold adventure, like what they call those, where it's three pages, the three page fold. Uh, you get the, the front page, uh, and then you get the descriptions of the village and the forest on the back page. Uh, a brief description of kind of what's going on. And then you get the dungeon itself once again. Very straightforward, but you get the art there. Easy to run all on one page. I like this quite a lot. There's an observatory that you're going down through some noisy stairs, which echo, and you can alert local monsters. A courtyard with the moon spheres, which you have to try to find. There's the altar, hidden stairs, a lady statue, a dorm shack, wandering monsters you can run into. And then the, uh, the guardian of this place, with a bathroom, a Beblin camp, and the secret ditch. A little adventure, but again, you could plug this in anywhere. Uh, the background makes it a bit more particular, so it'd be a little harder to, to just plug into any game anywhere, but fairly simple um, to, to adapt. There's a Beblin community, there's a fairy mother, uh, there is the Guami village, and, and that's pretty much all you need to, to adapt a little bit in order to run this game. So another great little adventure, but I love the art. I love how it's presented here. And it really does, it really would, at least for me, it would bring me, uh, I would love to run this. Just because it's, I think it's small, simple. This is a one session adventure, most likely, uh, one shot. And I, I don't know why, but the particular presentation of the art here is appealing to look at. So I guess that's probably why I like this one so much. So if, I mean, I'm not gonna do any kind of ranking system, but I think the Lair of the Alchemist and uh, Castle Corpenhalla are my favorites just because of their, pre well, my favorite is the Lair of the Alchemist, really. I think it's so well done, so well presented. And again, I can't believe these things are all pay what you want or free. Again, I'll put links to them below where you can get them. I would say you should, you should throw a couple dollars to these people if you run these games because they are definitely worth it. I mean, a lot of, especially some of these, a lot of work has been done in making sure the art works with the text and the, 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 just the flavor, creativity of these games, so good. So good. So uh, once again, it's the lily in the garden, the where the lost dare to tread for Mouse Ritter. Downsized Dungeons, which is for old school essentials. The lair, the lone artist's manor for Shadow Dark. The rotting gardens of Reflesia, which is also for Shadow Dark. Castle Copen Hollow, which is for Dungeon Reavers, Mork Bjorg, or old school essentials. Uh, you've got Parallel Dungeons, Dungeons, which is for any OSR game, system neutral. The lair of the alchemist and Forest of Storms for Cairn. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me. Hope this has been an interesting video, and I'll see you in another one.